Hey friends, it's Miss Rachel at Echo and Matter Library here to, with you again for another Teen Craft Academy program. So last week we did foam, today we're going to do screen printing from home. Now, this is a screen left over from one of the programs we had here that is screen printing, and it is going to be some of the similar kind of techniques. So if you've done that, you may find some things that you remember from that. Um, but we're going to use some items that are a little easier to get your hands on at home. Now this is a little bit more of a standard screen. It has a wooden frame and then it has this silk screen mesh staple along the edges to hold it really tight in place. Um, if this was a professional screen, as opposed to having um, this kind of masking we did here with Mod Podge, uh, you would be using something called photo emulsion, which is something where you coat the entire screen and it's uh, reactive to light. So what you would do is you would take a uh, printout, a black printout of your image on a clear piece of film, put it on top of that photo emulsion, and then uh, you would expose it with light very fast, and that would make all of the emulsion outside of your image develop and the stuff under your image not develop. So then when you spray it, the image, um, where the image was in the emulsion will leave the screen. It will spray off and the rest will not. We don't have that. That's a little bit fancier than what we're doing. What we're doing instead is we're using um, Mod Podge or watered down white craft glue. This is going to uh, work fairly well if you're just doing this for fun. It, and if you don't have Mod Podge, like I said, white craft glue is going to work very well. And then we, today, we didn't use it on this screen, but today with our other version, we're going to also use masking tape, which is called masking tape because it masks off sections. So that's what you call when you cover a section to keep something from going through it, like paint. It's called masking it off. So we're not going to be using this. Uh, the first substitution we can make here is fabric. So this is a screen printing mesh fabric. We, I am going to use that today just because that's what I have on hand. However, there are two other types of fabric that you can use that are pretty helpful. Um, if you look at this screen printing mesh fabric, what it is is it's a very, very tight weave. So if you look real close, there's lots of little holes and that's what you push the ink through, okay? So a, a cheap mesh curtain which you can get at a big box store, that will actually work quite well. It's a similar kind of fabric. Or uh, if you want to dig into a drawer, you can use old pantyhose. Now, word of warning here, pantyhose are very stretchy. This fabric is not super stretchy. So what that means is you have to not, you have to be a little bit more careful if you're using pantyhose not to tear it and to not pull the holes too wide. You do want them to be taut, but you want to have those nice little holes. So we can use that. Now, screen like this, you might not have a dedicated wood frame that you can use for screen printing. That's okay. You can use a old photo frame if you have one lying around. If you do that, just make sure that the side that the fabric is on is going to be on the flat side and that you have any funny molding facing up towards you, okay? But that's not what we're going to use. We are going to make a little screen. And we're going to make it like this. This is an embroidery hoop. If you have a parent or guardian who likes to embroider or so, or maybe you like to do that yourself, you might have one of these around. We're going to use that to make our screen because you can attach your fabric to it without using like a staple gun, which we would have needed to use for this kind of wood screen or like lots of duct tape. Uh, this is a, a little bit easier to get it to hold together immediately. So we're going to use that and we're, as I said, we're going to use that Mod Podge to mask it off. But step one though, we've talked about the materials. Let's actually talk about the most important decision you make with your screen print, which is what image you're going to use. So I am using this. It's a little piece of clip art of a really cool dragon head. And I chose it because one, it is all one color. You can do multiple color screen prints, but it, you require a different screen for every color. And then you also have to include something on your screen or something in the jig you use to put your screen up and down, which we're not gonna do that today. 
uh, to line up the colors exactly. That's kind of upper level stuff. If you want to try it, um, you can do it. Just make sure that you have a way to make sure that you put the screen in the exact same place each time and that the two different screen images will align. It's very hard. I would not suggest doing that first try. The other thing about this is that as much as I can, this is all one piece, right? So there's not so lots of little pieces all around. For a starter image, you want something like that that is um, mostly ink space as opposed to like lots of little dots of ink. The smaller something is, the more likely it is that it's going to get eaten up by bleed. What do I mean by bleed? It's like if the ink or if you use paint, the paint um, seeps under the edge where you want it to. And that, you're going to see later, it does happen to me pretty egregiously, but so it goes. Um, that is going to be something where the more fiddly and small your sp uh, spaces are in your image, the more likely that's going to happen. And it's also going to be more likely if you don't pull your screen taut, which I'm going to talk about a little bit later. Now, since we are using Mod Podge and we are painting our image on the screen, you can have little floating parts like this eye that are not connected to anything else. So this part will be masked and it'll have ink all around it. You can do that with this. It is You want to probably do as little of that as possible just because, it's again, that's going to be a trouble area where we might see some bleeding. So make sure you have a nice uh, image with lots of dark areas all in one piece. Very simple. And you know what? We've got our image decided. I think we can go and start making our screen. We'll need our materials. A embroidery hoop, Sharpie, ink, an old card, some masking tape, a brush, and Mod Podge, then our fabric. Now, first we'll want to put our fabric down over our image and cut it to size, make sure there's lots of extra space. Tape it down and then trace over the image so that we know where we need to mask off. And when that is done, we're going to remove the tape, pull it out, and we're going to attach it to the hoop. To make sure it's the right, facing the right way, we want to make sure that we put the hoop on it and then flip it over before putting the top part of the hoop on. And we'll want to pull it tight. Now, tape around the edges of the where the screen meets the hoop to protect the hoop from the ink and fill an extra hole with tape itself. Now we're going to mask off with the Mod Podge. So dip your brush in and in everywhere where you do not want there to be ink. What we're doing is basically filling in these holes, so we want to make sure it's pretty thick. And you want to also flip it over so that it is lifted off your surface so it does not actually stick to the surface as it dries. So we'll fill in all these little spots. And we'll be fairly precise with this so that you get a nice clean edge on your final image. Now when that's dry, you want to lift it up to the light and make sure there's no holes. There are, fill them in. Smooth out what you're printing on, in this case a shirt, on a flat, hard flat surface, and then place your screen on it. Now we're going to want to glob our lit ink onto the screen, and then you're going to do what's called a flood fill. So we're going to lift it up off there and then pull the ink down so it covers the whole image. And we're going to carefully place it back there, put pressure on it, and then pull the card towards the and a few smooth strokes. And just lift the screen off. Now you can see I had an issue with some bleeding, so I'm going to fast forward and go through this again. And now I have two images here. The one on the left was done with acrylic, so you can see it has more bleeding. That's because acrylic ink is a lot thinner than screen printing ink. So if you're going to splurge on anything for this, buy real screen printing ink. Once the image is dry as a touch, throw it in the dryer for a little while if it's on fabric, otherwise you're done. Hope you had fun. Thanks for coming.